Hi. <laughs> hello. Hello, hi, hello. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up? Home skillet biscuit. If I look exhausted, it's because I am. This movie drained every part of my soul. So much so that I didn't even do the intro. It's movie night, happy Saturday. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, uh, on Saturdays, I do a little something called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies and do my makeup. Last week, we talked about the Lifetime movie that got lucky, Secret Obsession. If you didn't see my video on that or any of the other movies that I've done thus far in this series, feel free to check it out above in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. This week, as I alluded to, was a lot. <laughs> it was so like there's an ongoing joke that kind of happens each week that people are always like, wow, Kendall, you sacrificed yourself and you watched this so I did not have to. And usually we we think of it as like, oh, that's funny, cute little joke, whatever. This one, I actually felt like I went to war and back for y'all. I had to watch it twice to make this video happen. Y'all think I just sit there and watch a movie and it's over? No, I watch it more than once. <laughs> Like I'm dying. <laughs> it's actual tears in my eyes. Also, I'm PMSing, so that might also be it. Like all I want to do is eat and cry, but this did not help. This week, we are looking into a subgenre that I haven't really touched on yet in the bad movie sphere. We've touched on the kind of artfully artless, the morally reprehensible, and the well-meaning but completely and utterly delusional. But today we're stepping into a subgenre that I like to call the hear me out films. These films are generally films that are thought up by a group of three to eight drunk and or high white men where one of them says, hey, I have an idea, hear me out. That sentence is usually followed by a movie that's premise can be completely and utterly summed up within one sentence. This sentence is usually a insert inanimate object or otherwise non-threatening item comes to life and kills people. I've seen killer donuts, killer tires, killer sushi. These all exist. These are all films that actually exist in the world. But today, in the spirit of the upcoming holiday, we are looking at a killer Thanksgiving turkey. Today we're looking at Thanks Killing. A Thanksgiving comedy horror whose main killer is a necromancied turkey. This is off topic, but I do and always have loved the word necromancy. Just sounds fancy. Fancy necromancy. Necrofancy. My other drag name. Once we get a little tired of banana jaundice. Perhaps the only strength of this film is its self-awareness. When you make a film whose main premise is, quote, a killer turkey, you know what type of movie you're making. <laughs> Like, unlike some of the other bad movies that we've been watching so far, all apparently tried to be good movies. They just failed horribly. And by nature have some form of sincerity, right? They knew, like they were trying to make a good movie, they just didn't. This movie set out to make a bad movie. There is no confusion. The very point of this movie is to be as disturbing and uncomfortable and, and outrageous and offensive, honestly, as possible. And in that regard, it certainly did succeed. With that said, is it gonna stop me from tearing it apart because it's awful? No, if that was the case, what I make these videos for? Because self-awareness is about all that this film has going for it. It is intended to be a horror comedy, but it is neither scary or funny. It is gross. And I feel like that was a very purposeful thing. So they definitely achieved that one. Now this film was created in 2007 with a whopping budget of $3,500 and I will give it one compliment. Given that that was the budget, they did a pretty good job with like the special effects, quote unquote, in regards to like the gore. So much so that I am going to attempt to censor as much of it as possible because good God, it's a lot. But even me describing it might also freak you out. So with that said, viewer discretion advised. It is complete with porn level acting, unnecessary female nudity, pointless sexual explicitness, campish gore, and of course, turkey puns. So many turkey puns. Not to mention it was made in 2007 as a comedy. So you know it was offensive to literally everyone. begins with a close-up of a pilgrim titty. 
You did not hear me wrong. It's just straight up titties. It's a pilgrim woman who is fully dressed all except her titties, who is seemingly running away from someone chasing after her because it's a horror movie and it's a bad one. So she is running and falls. Also cliche. Yes, we got it. We're going in the right direction. She is then axed to death by an anthropomorphic turkey who envelops us in the first melodic line of the film. Nice tits, bitch. Did I say I hate this movie? Cause I do. Fast forward to present day 2007. <laughs> Here we meet a group of undergrads who are certainly not in their 30s, why whatever would make you think that, who are preparing for their Thanksgiving break. And in good old horror movie fashion, we have all of our stereotypes covered. We have the jock, the nerd, the slut, quote unquote, good girl, quote unquote, cause she's freaking annoying. Like she's considered the good girl because all she does is slut shame the other girl all day. It's Thanksgiving, not Kitsgiving. The only thing that's kind of funny about this entire part is that it low-key looks like an episode of MTV Next. I'm Amanda, I'm 19, and I'm looking for a guy who's rough around the edges. Oh, oh no. And they all end up deciding to drive back to their hometown that is apparently very far away. <laughs> they just all happen to be from the same very far away city. There is a part where they try to give the jock a backstory, but basically he is a quarterback on the football team because he got benched that really messed up his relationship with his father because apparently that's all his father cares about is that he's the quarterback because otherwise he's just a trash person. <laughs> but what little entertainment I found was swiftly lost as soon as the nerd started talking. The nerd is giving off mad incel vibes, like creepy, rapey. I'm gonna have sex with someone in this car. It's not gonna be just me by myself. Also, this is completely and utterly pointless. Like th there is nothing really foreshadowing for anything. Like he doesn't have sex with anyone. So this is like literally a waste of my time. Granted the whole movie is a waste of my time. So what is my point? I'm gonna be the one doing the sexing. <laughs> yeah, to one of you. Um, did you ask like creepy entitled nerd guy? Like you're over here like somebody's getting smashed by me. I'm like, did did you did you engage the room? <laughs> like, they like rag on what is supposed to be the stereotypical dumb slut. She no, she deserves a name. Everybody else deserves to be their stereotype because they're awful. Her name is Allie. So screw you guys. Isn't gonna be me. I'm a prude. And their response is to basically talk about how much of a whore she is, especially coming from good girl. Like, yeah, basically he's like, wow, look at the whore not wanting to be a whore. Ah, ha, 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 ha. As if even a very sexually active person doesn't have autonomy. Like it's supposed to be offensive, but this is what people thought was funny. During 2008, people would have like genuinely laughed at this. Good girl, quote unquote, hits us with this zinger. Oh, please, Ali, your legs are harder to shut than the John Bonet Ramsey. Y'all have a raging sexual deviant in the car and y'all are mad at the girl that's having a lot of consensual sex. <laughs> okay, all right, priorities. Anyway, the pack is all traveling together, but before they can get back, the car overheats and they have to pull over to the side of the road, at which point they decide that they are going to just camp out. Ding, 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 I got some questions. Because they say they have tents ready to like camp out, right? When did y'all get tense? If y'all were just going home, why, why are y'all so prepared for this? That's the least of the problems here, Kendall. Come on, priorities. While they're setting up for the night, Nerd discovers a sign that says Crawbird. And this steadily alarms him. And it makes him run back to the rest of his group to tell them that they might be in danger. Because according to a settler era legend, back in the 1500s, there was a native shaman known as Feather Cloud, who was dishonored by some white pilgrims that came onto his land. To enact revenge against the pilgrims, Feather Cloud reanimated a turkey that is to rise every 505 years to attack white people. Dun, dun, dun. That's where we have this, no. Elsewhere, we have this guy that's going hunting with his dog and his dog gets away. The dog ends up desecrating a native totem pole. I'm so sorry to my native viewers. From the ground comes our homicidal turkey that kills the dog. 
A long as time later, the hunter finds the dog. And for some reason, the turkey is just still there. I guess he just wanted to chill out. Your dog had an accident. I took this here axe and I accidentally cut him. Get it? Accident. <laughs> Back at our teens, good girl, quote unquote, I hate her, separates from the crew to call her father because he doesn't know that their car broke down and he must be worried sick. He separates because she had bad reception as if this isn't 2007 and everywhere you go is bad reception, but okay. While out there, she gets her first glimpse of Turkey. That is the name of the, the antagonist, Turkey, by the way. I don't think they ever gave, gave it a name. <laughs> I'm gonna drink your blood like cranberry sauce, Mimi. She runs away from Turkey and returns to her friends and she warns them that the Turkey uh, folklore is actually real, that there is a killer Turkey out there that they should be trying to avoid. Everyone, including the nerd who brought it up originally and was seemingly pretty spooked about it, laughs at her. Yeah, I, it was just a story, Kristen. I doubt it's even true. <laughs> Randomly, a bunny is thrown into their bonfire from out of nowhere and no one really knows where it's from, but it doesn't freak them out for some reason, even though the bunny is seemingly disemboweled and of course flew into a bonfire out of nowhere. But regardless, it doesn't freak them out enough to leave and they just spend the entire night in the woods, even though one of them said they saw a killer turkey that they were all just discussing, but okay. Next day, chubby redneck dude is awakened by our wild hunter who says that he saved his life while he was sleeping because he was about to get attacked by turkey. Now we have two people that have said that they've in some way become in contact with the turkey, but they all just decide to drive back to their respective families and just try to have a good thanks Giving. Meanwhile, Turkey meets a zoo file while hitchhiking into town. That's gas of grass. Who is promptly killed. And Turkey decides to drive into town to kill those kids. Why those kids in particular, as opposed to any other human beings on the planet? Who knows? Maybe because they didn't have a budget for extra. Say they are the only kids on the planet. So also, outside of him asking a hitchhiking turkey for sexual favors, why is no one asking why this turkey can talk? <laughs> This is the worst movie I've seen in a minute. Uh, Jock comes back home and he has quite the strained meeting with his father, again, who doesn't love him because he's not star quarterback. <laughs> he said, I have very few things that I ask for. In order to kind of mend their relationship, Jock decides to lie to his dad and tell him that he is star quarterback. His dad is happy. I love you, dad. You're the best son anyone could ask for. And uh, that's about it. Like he dies swiftly after gets decapitated by a uh, turkey you know not by like a, a different serial killer because that would be ill put right what are what are the odds but at least he died happy i guess oh the mom is also dead by the way jock doesn't seem to be that torn up about it outside of like not getting food for thanksgiving no more pumpkin pie no more cranberry sauce i'm gonna kill that son of a bitch there's a scene where Allie gets sexually assaulted by the turkey but they record it as if it's funny and that bothers me so i'm not even gonna show any of that she ends up dead now the game decides that they need to get together and kill the turkey right and it's late so they can't go to the library so they decide to go over good girl quote unquote house i hate her i hate her so much i hate everything about her she's horrible they decide to go to good girl's house because her dad has a lot of books and quote he is bound to have one about killer turkeys now good girl's father is the sheriff of the town and though he is short-lived he is probably the only person that gives me something to work with comedically <laughs> like i don't think he's actually funny i think he's just funny in comparison like at this point having watched this movie for however many minutes um my my bar is very 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 low so if you get a chortle out of me oh my god he's a genius also he's probably the only person in the story that feels like they kind of commit to their character so maybe that's it but uh for some reason he thinks he's in a contest where he has to dress up as a turkey i guess i don't really understand this situation but he dresses up and turkey comes to the house looking for good girl like the scene is actually kind of funny like the turkey goes in and they have like this awkward kind of <laughs> kind of just like sitting there drinking coffee i actually found this legitimately funny he's on it yep but regardless, he ends up dead, so. Do I want eye gloss? Why am I saying that as if I don't know? Yes, yes, I do want eye gloss. When the kids arrive, they can't tell that that's not her father. They just walk in and they go in the basement to look for that 
book that would have the answers on how to kill the turkey. Now this movie is dumb as we already know, but this is in a particular way because the turkey doesn't just kill them now. The turkey is immortal and it's killed everything without thinking up until this point. So I don't know why now it's like, oh, I have all these kids that I was trying to kill anyway. I'm gonna wait to do it for some reason. Anyway, they search the basement and eventually find the key to killing the turkey, which is basically they have to take a talisman off of the turkey, say some prayer backward, and then burn the turkey at a stake. But before they can do any of those things, a redneck discovers turkey hiding the body of the sheriff. And apparently only then does it click that that is not the sheriff. Disrespected our people really, really badly. But we gave your people land and we let you have casinos. Doesn't that make up for what our ancestors did? That privilege logic. <laughs> they are able to wrestle the talisman outside of the turkey's feathers, but they weren't able to do any of the other things to help kill it before the turkey gets away. Now, if you hadn't noticed, no one seems to be sad that anyone died in this movie. They've lost parents, they've lost friends. Like the most emotion I've got out of anybody was the dude that lost his dog. Why? Why? Damn you, turkey! Damn you! So I suppose in an effort of some realism, they had Jock and Good Girl have a romance arc where they're consoling each other for all that has happened and it's just a waste of time. I hate this movie. Yeah, Turkey Kills Redneck. There's not a lot of that I can show. Now that's what I call foul play. Someone please end this movie. I feel like I've been here forever. I feel like I'm being held hostage by myself. The rest of the crew ends up finding our disemboweled friend here. I'm not gonna lie, this part was kind of funny because he's like literally dying with his innards coming out and they're like, it's not that bad. They find out that the turkey is actually living in a teepee. Again, I'm so sorry, my Native American viewers. They are able to do the chant that takes away the turkey's immortality, but they weren't able to set it on fire before he gets away. But he does get shot by our, our, our random guy that keeps popping up the one from the woods, the hunter guy. And they're like, wow, what an end to this. I sure learned a lot from this experience. And I made lifelong friends. Your, your parents died. And y'all saying these little goodbyes as if y'all gonna miss your friends from camp. Also at no point was the ambulance, the authorities, anybody ever called for any of these people. Like, Granted, I get it would be kind of hard to explain to them that a homicidal turkey is running around killing people, but but instead to decompress, they decide to go over Good Girl's house and watch a movie. Y'all not going like organize funerals or <laughs> like anything. <laughs> okay. Don't get too comfortable because guess who's back because of very conveniently placed Radioactive waste. <laughs> uh, Turkey graphically kills nerd guy. He like rips his tongue out in his heart. So that was fun to look at. Jock also gets stabbed with an electric carving knife. Good girl and Jock run into a shed, but he ends up dying, but not before he can pass her her life-saving lighter she uses to set the bird on fire. She ends up hitting him with a bat that throws him into a very conveniently placed bonfire. Deadass, this movie is a work hazard. Like it brought me to a very dark place very quickly. I feel like it should come with a coupon for therapy and a, and a voucher for Baskin Robbins. And like a doctor's note that says, I watched Thanks Killing, so I'm brain dead for 72 hours. The the bird sets on fire. A singular roasted turkey leg pops out and falls onto the ground, which good girl promptly eats. You know what's sad when the least disgusting thing is a woman eating a undoubtedly raw piece of turkey that fell on a muddy ground that had also at one point been in contact with radioactive waste. It's sad that that is the least gross thing about this movie. The movie ends with a random family sitting at the Thanksgiving table, praying, and a different turkey comes back to life. Do I smell sequel? Beyond! Yay. Critic reception of this movie was largely unimpressed. <laughs> Cheerfully awful. It's a comedy horror movie, but even the humor is awful. Mountainous pile of garbage. <laughs> but negative criticism aside, being that it is on this playlist, it means that it probably garnered a what? Cult following, you got it. So much so that there was at least one sequel. There might've even been two, I'm not completely sure, but at least one sequel and a musical. So artfully called Thanks Killing 
the musical. If at any point you would like to see this film, all that I ask is that you do not pay one cent to see it. That's all I ask. I don't ask a lot, all right? If you would like to see it, please feel free to follow the link down in the description box that shows you the age-restricted YouTube video. But if you're curious about what the things are that I censored, have at it. That's all for today, folks. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Again, if you haven't checked out any of our other bad movies and a beats, that will be up in the playlist up above. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are KennyJD. And I will see you guys next time.